Today's daf is daf chav gimel, and let's remind ourselves on the bottom of daf chav beis amid beis toner abonon chacham shemeis beis midrasho batel, which means that we close the beis medrash of that chacham who passed away, and during the course of shiva, instead of frequenting frequenting the beis hamedrash of the chacham, what we do is yoshvim. And we sit in our homes, dvoim, and we're in a state of divui, meaning we're very, very upset. Now we turn to Daf of Gimel Amaral, the Korin Shiva Vyotsim. However, on Shabbos, we will gather together in the synagogue of that Chacham in order to read the Torah uh, properly with its Sibur. So it means that. When we could differentiate between tefillah and Kriya Satora. On the one hand, tefillah, we're going to allow tefillah be yachid, and we're not going to gather together the tzibur in the base medjish of the Chacham who died. But as far as Kriya Satora is concerned, we cannot give up on Kriya Satora. We'll at, gravitate and create a minion for Kriya Satora. Rabbi Yeshua ben Karcha Omer, according to Rabbi Yeshua ben Karcha, Make sure that if we're not going to the shul to daven, and we're davening biyachidus during that week of shiva on behalf of the chacham who died, we're not going to walk through the shuk, we're not going to take spatsirs, el yoshvim vidomim, we should sit and be silent in that state of dvoya, of being upset. Here we have machlokes, whether or not there's any heter to teach Torah in a base of El. According to Rabbi Yeshua ben Karcha, we're not going to allow any, any learning of Talmud, any study of Agadita, Pikuri Hashem, Yeshua ben Samchilev, we don't want Simcha in a base of El, it's antithetical. But Omro Lava Rabbi Hananya ben Gamliel, Shaya Omer Shmua Vagad of the base of that he was lenient and he allowed for the teaching of Halach and Agadna in a base of And this is reflected in our Minog that we learn Mishnayis in a base of perhaps the Mishnayis of Mikvos. And Rab Hananya ben Gamliel allows the study of Torah in a base of according to. Sheet of the Ramban, that's only on Shabbos, not during the course of the week. But others were of the opinion that even during the course of the week, Rabbi, Rabbi Hananya ben Gamliel would allow the study of Torah in the base of El. Torah Rabbanu, we learned in a brisa. Of El, Shabbos, Rishona, Eina Yotzim, Pesach Beso. On the first Shabbos, which seems to mean during Shiva, and we'll soon see the Rabbi Yehuda objects to that interpretation. But the simple, straightforward chat here in the Brisa is that it's telling me that the Avel doesn't leave his house on the Shabbos of Shiva. Shnia, on the second Shabbos, he's already beyond Shiva. He's in Shloshim. He's in Shloshim. Yotzev, he ain't in Como. He's allowed to go out. But when it comes to sitting in the Beis HaKnesses, he does not sit in his makom kavua. So his neogavelus is the fact that he changes his location. Shlishis, on the third week, we're still in Shloshim, Yoshev bim koma. He's allowed to return to his makom kavua and sit there in the Beis HaKnes, Beis HaMedrish. But how does he express the fact that he's still in avelus of Shloshim? Eino midabe. He doesn't speak, which means he curtails his gregarious, friendly speech. Revius, once we reach the fourth Shabbos, Harev Kechol Adam, which means that he's allowed to go out of his house. He's allowed to sit in his permanent place. He's allowed to speak as much as he wants. Says Rabbi Yehuda, wait a minute, something is off base over here in terms of the way they <coughs> calculate the Shabbosos. Lo hutzuchu lo Shabbos richon mi Pesach peso. It doesn't make sense that the Bryce would tell me that he's not allowed to leave his house on the first Shabbos during Shiva. 
there is no heter for him to leave his house. He's in a base alvel. That's where the Menachemim come to be Menachemim. That's the base alvel. So, what are you telling me that on the first Shabbos, and he don't say, Mi Pesach Beso? He doesn't go out of his house? We know that there's a din of base Ovel, and the Ovel is, in a sense, in jail. He's not allowed to leave the base Ovel. Ella, let's push up everything by one week. Shnia ain't a Yotze mi Pesach Beso. That even on the second week, Meaning we're already in Shlochim, and yet Rabbi Yehuda says he does not leave his house. Shlishis, only on the third week, Yod says he's allowed to leave his house. Vienna Yochim Komo, he doesn't sit in his Makom Kavu in the Beisach Knesset. Revius Yochim Komo, but again, he's still within the framework of Avelus. And the Avelus, to some extent, uh, spills over beyond the fourth Shabbos. And he shouldn't initiate conversations and gregarious uh, intercourse. However, so Rabbi Yehuda pushes up everything by a week. Every single stage that's mentioned by the Tanakama is accepted by Rabbi Yehuda, but delayed by one week. On Rabbanu, we learned in Abraisa. During the course of Shlochim, a man is not allowed to marry a woman. Now, we have two stages of marriage. We have Kedushin and Nesuin. We're prohibiting Nesuin during Shlochim. But the implication is that Erisin would be mut. And that's going to introduce a concept called Shemi Yikad Menu Ach. We'll get to that later. Mesa Ishto, the Isur of marriage with regard to an Ovel is more chamur in the case where he lost his wife. And also Lisa Ich Acheres Achiavel of Sholosh Regolim. According to the Tanakama of this Brisa, he's got to wait three Regolim until he can get married again. Now, the Rishonim want to know, is this an indication of the Chumra of the Avelus for Ishto? No. They say this has nothing to do with the Avelus and the Chumras Avelus, but rather it has to do with what looks to the outside world as if he didn't sustain any loss. He's not pained by the death of his wife. Look how quickly he got remarried. Let three Regalim go by until he gets remarried. However, we have the Rush who comes up with a different dimension, a different perspective on this Iser, and that is that it's Allah in Gimel Regal, that the Regalim requires Simcha, and he's not going to be in a state of Simcha because He's constantly thinking about his wife. And after the three Regolim pass, then he can focus on his Simcha. So the Chachamim wanted this widower to remain in that state of reminding himself about the loss of his wife, in which case he will not really be able to achieve that full-fledged mitzvah of Simchas Yantiv, whereas if we would allow him to get remarried immediately, then perhaps he would have a full Simcha on Yantiv with his new wife, but that in a sense would undermine his feelings and his loss of his first wife. Others say, and this is common amongst the Maliyat Potsis, that if he gets remarried too quickly, then during relations, during intimacy, he might have mind his first wife. If the issue is Piri of Arivia, he has one son, no, no other children. He has one daughter, no other children. He has two sons or two daughters. He hasn't had yet 
one male and one female child, then we're going to allow them to get married immediately. What does that mean immediately? Imperial Varivia. So the Ritva says that immediately means after Shiva, during Shlosh. And the Shulchan Aruch makes a pshara here. He says that we're going to allow him Arisen if he doesn't have the Mitzvah Piri Verivia fulfilled. And that's immediate, even during Shiva. However, in the Suin, we're going to have to put stone until after Shiva during Shlosh in the sake of, for the sake of Piri Verivia. Arisen per se is not a Maisa Simcha. It's a Kenyan. The real Maisa Simcha is Nesuin, when he takes her into the Chum. Now we have an, another Kula in our veils that goes even beyond the Kula of Bittal Perivarivya, and that is he Nichol Obadim Ketanen. There are young children. He's out to work. He won't be able to raise the children. There's a unique dimension that a woman has to raise the children. Mutu Lisa Lialta. He can get married immediately, and again, we'll see what immediately means in this context, but they part of Sosom, so that they will have a mother to raise them and care for them. Once again, we have the same pshara of the, uh, of the Shulchan Aruch in Yeridea, and that is that he's allowed to perform Erisid immediately during Shiva. However, he should postpone the suin until after Shiva and consummate the marriage during Shalom. Maisa Shemesa Ishto Shor Yosef HaKohen, Fi Omer Lachosov Bebeis HaKvaros Lechiyu Parnasiyas Bnei Achosech. Meaning, raise your sister's children. Be the mother, not just an aunt, for your sister's children. And he was implying that we should get married. And apparently, he did implement Arison during Shiva, immediately after the Kvur of his wife, even in the cemetery itself. But he did not have relations with her until a longer period of time. Now, I have a question to ask on the side here. Apparently, she would come into his house to raise the children. And I'm wondering if there's a problem of Yichud, because he's not allowed to have fear with until after Shloch. Tan Rabbana, we learned to the Bryce, and both Shloch and Gihuds. Okay, now we have to understand what Gihuds is. Gihuds is a very technical word in Mesechdemoid Katan in the context of Avelus. Now, the word giyutz translates literally as pressing. However, in truth, there are three stages to the laundering process. Stage number one is laundering, where you soak the garments in soap and water. Stage number two is giyutz which means pressing. But then they did something very special in stage number three. After the pressing, they took the laundered clothing and they laid it out on a smooth table. They took then glass, glass stone, and they rubbed it until it developed a certain shine. And that was done as a special process, call it a special pressing. And it gave a particularly nice look to the clothing. And that's called machbesh. So we have giyutz, which is pressing, and then machbesh, 
with this special pressing after pressing, and they gave it a beautiful shine. So the Tanakam of this Brisa is very machmir. And he says that Kol Shloshim Yom gives that during the 30-day period of Avelus, he cannot wear clothing that were freshly laundered. Echad kelim chadoshim, echad kelim yishonim. And it matters not whether these are kelim chadoshim or kelim yishonim that are like Kalim Chadashim, namely Yotzim Itocha Mikhash. Rebbe Omer, Lo Asu Ela Kalim Chadashim Bilvat. Although the Mikhash makes the Kalim Yishonim like Chadashim, but it's not exactly Chadashim, and therefore you're allowed to wear those Kalim from the Mikhash during Shloshim. Rebbe Eliezer, Bereb Shimon Omer, Lo Asu Ela Kalim Chadashim Levanim. Even in the case where Rebbe agrees Lechumra, Rabbi Elazar is going to be making. In other words, you can allow Kalim Chadashim as long as that colored clothing and not white clothing. Abaye Nofak Begarda de Sarbala. Again, I can't tell you what this is about, this Garda de Sarbala. I don't have a picture of it. The English, he translates it as teaseled, a teaseled coat. Anyway, certainly it's a very special garment and it looks brand new. And Karebi. Since it wasn't brand new, he, Abaye, relied on Rebbe, who was Mekil, and he held the Osir Lekelim Chadoshim Bilvat. Rava Nafik, Rava accepted an even greater Kula, and he went out during Shloshim Bechimutsta Romisa Sumakta. So as far as the Aramaic is concerned, I'm familiar with the word sumakta. Sumakta is red. Sumka. Chimutza is some sort of a garment, and Romisa means it's new. Kirabi Elazar ben Reb Shimon. He relied on the kula of Reb Lazar that as long as it's not white clothing, you're allowed to wear it. Bebnei ma, bebnei so now we go back to the Mishnah Daf Yutes. And every Avelis, every Shiva, of course, overlaps with Shabbos. What's the status of Shabbos? Ola Vienam of Sekis. And then the Mishnah goes on to contrast Yantif, because Yantif is Mavatil Shiva, but Shabbos is not Mavatil Shiva. And it's counted as part of the seven days of Avelis. And the Gemara now quotes the Machlokas between the Bnei Goliel and the Bnei Yehuda. Hani Amri, Yesh Avelis B'Shabbos. 